so let us move on to the first article now fixed disk combination so what is this article about the irrational use of fd fdcs and its threat in india so it, it is giving a just why if fdcs are not successful in india so whether it is relevant to EPU, upsc direct question which was asked in 2013 and it, it is about fdc pros and cons of pros and cons of fixed dose combination a straight question which is asked in 2013 and 2014 also asked over use of antibiotics and the self medication so what will be the effects so these are two related areas which is highly asked so we can expect uh, some areas like uh, threats of antimicrobial resistance how we are going to solve or the, what are the challenges in this thing in can be a uh, question and uh, we are using the generic drugs of substandard quality so what can be cons of ge uh, generic drugs which can which is related to the FTCs is and because instead of using the generic drugs like the pattern people wants to impose their own drugs in a new name so they are going for fdc uh, and without any uh, standard uh, standard testing so the generic test uh, drugs and its relate, uh, a relation to the fdc's and next one is, is unregulation uh, regulation of pharma or the api active pharma ingredient can be an interest for uh, U upsc so please uh, be prepared for this let us move on to the article now so this main crux of the article is 2016 government banned some 344 fixed drug combination so pharma companies went to, to the court for appeal so that uh, government action is very hasty and illogical and all but at uh, government uh, supreme court was favor of uh, favor with the government action we will see what is fdc first fdc is nothing but it is a two or more drugs or combined in order to get the maximum efficiency maximizing the drug efficiency it is like one one component for uh, health disease i mean for uh, some some pain reliever and one for uh, uh, removing any side effects like that if you are not using it in a regional way it can turn to be a disaster because it promotes antimicrobial resistance if not designed rationally so the best example is that combination of oflexin and cloxacillin uh, it is uh, used in india and it is a deadly combination which cannot be used together but still using in india and um, because of unregulation and uh, report says that india is the biggest consumers of dangerous fixed dose combination because of the wide varieties of market and the generic drugs and so much of uh, drug market itself arranged so next one is that who concerns it because antibiotics lost uh, it is a last resort antibiotics so when this efficiency is getting lost so it will impact the huge public it, it will turn to be a biggest uh, human and health impact so this is a major concern for uh, WHO. Let us move on to the analysis part now. So first part is that uh, if you are using the fixed uh, fixed dose combination, even if we are doing in a rational basis, there are some concerns because uh, these two drugs will in um, will react together like that one uh, drugs interaction. Because of this, what will happen? And uh, there will be uh, some side effects, and the shelf life may be get disturbed, or uh, new types of, of reactions have come out. So, fixed dose combination in general, in general itself has its own effects. And the next one is that if we are manufacturing, I mean the manufacturing industry is while manufacturing, they need to formulate, the, the, during the formulation time and the administration time, they need so much care to be taken while uh, rationalizing fixed dose combination, which one and which not to be. And the next one is pharmacokinetics, that is the um, pharmacology and its kinetic mechanism um, of every individual drugs needs to be taken care so that its reaction with the other has to be known so it is not practiced in india and other even the mncs are uh, pouring their fdcs is in india so it they are not bothering about the pharmacokinetics that is a main concern and of uh, public health experts and who as well and the next one is we don't have any uh, recorded database for uh, adverse drug reaction reporting system so it, it is an unknown area or uh, under uh, under discovered area we need to explore in that area because we need to record what is the drug reaction and how it is affecting and the next one is these uh, pharma people pharma business people so to uh, what they are doing to avoid the price control reformulation of individual drugs into fdgs by simply changing like how uh, this pattern people are doing evergreening of pattern the same way they are doing so the next one is market of generic medicine systems as i uh, told you earlier uh, to pull down this uh, this generic medicines and which is duplicated in so many versions so without, without any standardized test or uh, other things like uh, 
what I've told in Feb 4th editorial, like without any bioequivalence test, the, uh, this generic medicine poses a threat by using FDCs. And the role of strong marketing, because marketing which is uh, influencing the peoples and the persons, junior doctors and the um, medical reps, they are involving in, and uh, they are involving in recommending the fixed dose combination without awareness that it will create a huge impact on the public health. So what we need to do to uh, arrest this fixed dose combination irrational use. So we, we need to strengthen our regulator. So this is the 59th parliamentary standing committee report. By strengthening the regulator, we can strengthen our uh, use of fixed dose combination in our country. And next one is harmonizing procedures to license FDC. So as of now, we don't have any uh, harmonized policy because if we need to integrate state level and the central level policies is to uh, frame up work to framework a uh, licensing policy for FDCs and it is not strictly implemented as well. So we need to focus on these two areas. These are two areas from the regulator aspect. And the next one is, is in clinical practice, pharmacovigilance is completely absent. So that is why we are recommending additional inspectors as to increase this pharmacovigilance. And uh, here you can uh, actually add uh, whistleblowers act also. If the company is not doing ethically or are uh, irrationally using fixed dose combination, how we are uh, um, involving a uh, whistleblowers act to keep them. Whistleblowers act by protecting them, how we can get the information about the unethical practices of the pharma companies as well. And the next one is, we are having national list of essential medicines for affordable care and national formulary of India. So, uh, and the standard guidelines we need to maintain. So all these things, we we, are, we need to update our, our fixed dose combination and the strict monitoring in, in all levels, right from the district level or at the block level. Everywhere we need to uh, frequently audit is the availability of fixed dose combination as it is recommended by the government or not. So WHO said that at, uh, in the 2015 era, common cold will lead to death. So the antimicrobial resistance is a real threat. That is the exact meaning what WHO conveyed to us. So we need to focus on uh, reducing antimicrobial resistance. And it is a time for everyone to realize that public health is not a clinic uh, lab to test the medicines clinically. Uh, and it, it is not a market industry to test every uh, dustbin of medicines. So let us move on to the second article, which is about fearing cryptocurrencies. Why this article came? Because in budget speech, the finance minister told that but, um, we are not allowing uh, cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin anymore. We are going to suppress the availability of cryptocurrencies or use of cryptocurrencies in uh, in India. So here comes the news. So whether the cryptocurrencies are uh, useful or not useful, why every sovereign governments are, are not allowing the cryptocurrencies like that. So we will see because in UPRC, we, we are expected in 2017 itself about the question about cryptocurrencies or the blockchain technology. So we are, uh, they didn't ask in 2017 so we can expect a question in 2018 and because of the blue boom it created market boom it created for the cryptocurrencies like bitcoin and the high-end values and it becomes an investment part for many other people so it is highly interesting area now we'll see the expected areas first one is denationalized currencies and the blockchain uh, maybe a blockchain technology and cryptocurrencies i have told and uh, we can expect in gs3 how the cryptocurrencies can be a fund for terrorist financing and how it is paving a way because arms drugs uh, arms illegal trade and drugs illegal trade are happening via this uh, dark uh, via this cryptocurrencies in dark net so it was reported uh, last year and previous year so we can expect a question here also let us move on to the article now so this crux of the uh, crux of the article governments are taking steps to suppress the cryptocurrencies not only india so many other countries are taking steps first one is i think vietnam and so many other countries are following and the one uh, interesting area here is what that venezuela adopted first um, first nation to adopt the virtual currency is venezuela that is petro um, recently it was uh, adopted and india and the budget speech it was announced as i've told every government has a legal monopoly over the currency which is it is producing and the issuance of currency so that is it is a currency is the government's monopoly so it has every right to issue and produce so if we are uh, if the virtual currencies came into play this um, monopoly will be affected the main one and the next one is banking is a facilitator uh, which is paying the way for uh, currency issuing and the maintaining and all so now the concept of banking itself will go will go away and shed away so it will create there is no um, 
regulator for the currency itself so currency will depends upon the market fluctuation and all so that is a main fear for the governments and if what will happen if the crypt cryptocurrencies are allowed at others is that ordinary people will find a rare opportunity to choose whichever uh, currencies they find it is better or uh, in the market so they have they has every they have every right to choose the currencies they want so it um, because multiple currencies are available and uh, this it is highly recommended by an an uh, author frederick hayek in denationalization of money so he says that cryptocurrency will be the future uh, and the money will be denationalized so the sovereignty of currency will be lost so that is what he is trying to convey here or uh, and what will happen because of this cryptocurrencies and the uh, denationalization of currency so it will give a stability for the purchase power so people will be happier to get that money because inflation uh, amounts and all will not inflation level will not be that much but what happens cryptocurrencies like bitcoin it is not uh, trusted by the people because it is booming now mainly because of its speculative uh, it is considered as a speculative asset so it is not yet trusted by the people so let us move on to the part here what uh, what are the benefits and the concerns of using cryptocurrencies so if we are uh, using cryptocurrencies as instead of credit cards we can use the cryptocurrencies because it is very quick and easy payments and without any um, money for charging for each transaction also we can use instead of credit cards and the next one is access is very much easy because it is available now on our website i mean in the net virtual thing and the next one is cost is also very less and here there is no third party involved so we can directly use here comes uh, paypal or something paytm and all so next one is this as i've told sovereignty of the currency gets lost so it is a uh, you uh, are not bounded by any country thing and the next one is cryptocurrencies are generally considered to be more transparent because every layer or transaction is uh, recorded in the ledger account so uh, whenever it is getting transacted so the some kind of recording is there so uh, this can be a more transparent currency than any other uh, fiat currencies available in our uh, system and the next one is inflation as i've told you earlier it is highly unlikely in by using the cryptocurrency but there are some um, dark sides of cryptocurrencies as well because of its uncertainty because once it is gone it is lost so we cannot retrieve back like and it is highly untraceable who is having that and all so we had the opportunity to record the uh, record in the ledger but we don't have the opportunity about the tracing part so it is highly untraceable and once it is i told it is lost and energy consumption part it is taken and to produce almost a village uh, we can electrify a village by in for mining one bitcoin so it is highly energy consumption and the next one is i've told the no way of return and and it is highly unregulated so every anyone can access so even a uh, i've told you earlier the terrorist can can have a, an access for illegal activities the stability of the finance will be collapsed if you are having an unregulated currency which is completely decided by the market and the speculation and the next one is i've told already it is a, it is mainly used for misusing in for illegal activities arms trade web uh, this drugs and all so as of now uh, developed uh, countries like they have started accepting in cryptocurrencies in so many areas like uh, started entering into the supermarkets acceptance or see any other kinds so it is getting penetrated in developed countries but in developing countries like india the market is not it started and even uh, in so many areas it is a uh, it is like an, a startup area so so many people can invest in in the startup area like angel fund and venture capital the maturity of the cryptocurrency and the stability of the cryptocurrency needs to be seen in a future or uh, and it needs some sort of regulation to enter into part of the legal domain Trip well this area. This can be highly expected area. We'll move on to the next uh, topic. Next topic is about quoting the rankings. Recently, we uh, we have improved our rank in ease of doing business from one thirtieth position to hundredth position. But yet there are some areas we are not. We need to march ahead. And one such area is dispute resolution system. So arbitration and conciliation mechanism, which is highly, uh, uh, which was asked in twenty fifteen. and and uh, we can expect a question also because we are improving this year 30 places we jumped in front so ease of doing business can be a question and we can uh, maybe the question may be what are the steps taken by the government enable the success of uh, moving to 100th place like that the question can be asked what are the steps taken by the government they can ask how much economy is uh, involved in because only because of delayed in, uh, delayed laws or delayed 
uh, dispute, uh, dispute resolution mechanism. So what we need to do, and uh, there can be question. And even though we have taken so many steps, what what is the real thing we are lagging in solving the international disp uh, sorry uh, dispute resolution? Ease of doing business. It is based on average of ten sub indices, and the first one is starting a business, and the next one is dealing with the construction permit. So how long we are taking uh, to give a permission? And the next one is the other uh, infrastructure connections like electricity and all. And how uh, and how we are registering the property? So these are the uh, rules and the methods followed in every country. So based on these indices, as ease of doing business is calculated, and uh, how how a company is able to get credit, how long it is taking, what is the procedures and all, and protecting minority investor. We can here we can say that we have launched SCST hubs and all for startups, startup standups and all, and the paying taxes as part whether. Here, tax terrorism can be an area. This area, this ease of doing business report, but uh, didn't calculate our GST measures and the demonetization. So here, paying taxes improvement can be GST and all, and the trading across the borders. How how far we are allowing our uh, uh, trade in terms of dollars or something. And the next one is enforcing contract. So here comes the main uh, part of our article now, and the resolving insolvency. So article says that. Enforcing the contract is nothing but country's ability to solve the uh, commercial dispute resolution and mechanism. So, how far it is effectively providing the dispute resolution, solving the problem, and uh, and helping them or facilitating them to do business again, and or uh, enabling them to smooth way. But a report shows that India it takes uh, on an average four years of time to solve a uh, dispute. And especially international dispute resolution itself. So here comes our marks were 40.6 highly with respect to distance to frontier ranking. 40.6 is less than minimum. If you are getting 100, it is an idle mark. Countries like Singapore, uh, uh, Singapore and all done well because they are getting 80 point uh, some marks in here. So next one is. So next one is commercial codes have been established by the Act in 2015, but it is not uh, established as we expected because commercial codes at district level, uh, uh, even the physical infrastructure is not available, and even so, if it is available, uh, there is no separate such, uh, judge for the commercial dispute resolution, and at the district level, as of now, the district magistrate has taken care of the commercial judge as well. And the next one is appeals at High Court was placed. So this mechanism has to be done. And it is not implemented in so many states and the state government has its own responsibility to help them and facilitate them and uh, in this act uh, 2015 act says that section 3 appointment of commercial court judges they should be an expertise point and i've mentioned this earlier and the next one is infrastructure part that is mentioned in section 19 and the next one is training by the state government it is section 20 and the next one is this transparency by updating the details in the website it is not done so far so these are the loopholes or uh, the areas need to be done to improve our commercial dispute resolution mechanism in our country. So what are the other flaws that is present here? The first one we have uh, told that poor infrastructure and we have uh, we have our own inherent flaw that is delayed proceedings and un unprofessional arbitrators because our arbitrators are not skilled enough to deal with the commercial dispute resolution mechanism as of now it is accepted by the uh, many law experts. And the next one is old rigid laws, which is not flexible enough to facilitate the business in the soil. And the next one is even while avoiding the judgments, it is often poor quality. It was reported by the international group. So what is the need? Need is that first we need to create awareness. That is we are having a separate commercial dispute resolution mechanism. So uh, please don't go to the normal route of pending in the court piling up in the code so first the awareness has to be created it is still low in the general general uh, business investors and the next one is expertise to be appointed as a judges and the uh, in the law field especially for the commercial dispute resolution and from the education and the training it has to be linked here and the next one is is, uh, we need to uh, create the professional structure so fixed fee structure and organize the structure of physical infrastructure has to be put in place is uh, as if the no, government has sanctions uh, monies and the state government has to take a role in implementing this and the next one is so we have creating mumbai center for international arbitration so it is a first step we have been creating institutional arbitration it is high demand uh, of the country now as we are focusing more in improving the improving the business and getting success in the make in India. So 
flexibility, speed and the cost effectiveness or the three mantras needs to be taken care or and it will pay the way for doing business. Since uh, 17 economics survey also told that uh, Chakra Vyuha, so we please link all those areas doing business from start to end and uh, along with the startup and the venture capital fund and uh, this year budget also I mentioned about capital gains tax. So please try to integrate all these uh, topics and uh, get a thorough knowledge in this area. The budget related topics from Feb 1 to 7 will be taken a separate uh, in a separate video. So it will be uploaded soon. Prepare well. All the very best. Thank you so much.